Hello and welcome to Git Good. This is a video of me painting uh, some of Jane Sars uh, armor. And um, I've already painted quite a lot of it. Um, this is a mo an older model that I had <clears throat> and previously started. Um, I actually started it right after I finished Dante because I, uh, for two reasons. One reason being that I, I really wanted to uh, like paint something different. Um, and, and she's not like full non-metallic metal and she has some elements on her, but she's not full of it. Uh, and the other reason was that the colors involved were colors that I really wanted to uh, try out and paint something with them, especially in the in the setup that I'm using them. But I'll I'll come back to that. Um, so that means I have already been painting uh, some of the armor panels and some of the um, the the gold on her. Um, I also base coated the, uh, the, like the leather in between the panels or whatever kind of fabric that it, uh, I'm, I'm going to paint it up as something leathery looking at least. Um, but I already base coated that. I base coated it in, uh, Rhinox hide, which is, the uh, the dark, uh, puddle top left um, and uh, it's the same base coat for the golds um, I won't be I won't be painting the gold in this uh, this video uh, but I will be painting more of that in, in later videos um, so to speak a bit about uh, how I'm painting these panels before we get into the color specific is um, the, the panels are, uh, they, they kind of have an edge, but because they are uh, raised, that edge is kind of like a fat edge, I guess. Um, so you really need to be careful going around uh, to not get that super dark line between the, the leather part and the, the, the kind of top part of a uh, of the panel, it, it is tricky uh, to get that to to work. And you can, if you accidentally go into the leather a bit, you can take some of the Rhinox hide or whatever color you, you're using for it um, and just neaten it up uh, afterwards. Just uh, try and be mindful that you don't get that uh, very dark edge going up on the panel itself. As you can see on the on the areas I've already painted, I'm choosing a top and left lighting uh, and going for kind of like an off-white color to the panels. They are in the bluish tones uh, primarily, but they are starting in the reddish tones, which means all the shadows um, are kind of in the red in the red scheme uh, i'm i'm constantly trying to figure out the exact size of uh, like the bright reflections so kind of like the the blue area how big i want that in relation to the red area which is also why uh, i'm I'm painting in a reflection and later on I will be extending it a bit and looking and seeing if it, it makes sense. Her posing is a bit weird. She's almost kind of flexed or sh like shaped like a bow, uh, which means her chest and face and arm is uh, like uh, gets directly hit with uh, with the bright light from up top and 
uh, also her um, like her bent leg to some extent while the the stretched leg uh, on our left is uh, is hit less um, I I won't be finishing all the panels in in the, in this video because it, it takes a while <laughs> uh, and because it was some time ago I started this one um, I also needed to kind of like get into the colors again and uh, in the beginning I actually spent time just kind of color matching and seeing if the blues are matching the way I want them to and the reds too and um, so it will like take a bit of time and effort for me to get exactly into like what it's supposed to look like uh, but that's not to mean I, I, I can use uh, like this time to show a bit of how I'm doing it um, to I, I want to address why I, I left the, the model for a time uh, right after Dante as I said I wanted to do something different and this one is very different uh, but uh, it turns out that uh, coming from Dante and obsessing over every little detail and every little edge and uh, so 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 much like tiny tiny work and scratching and uh, what have you <laughs> didn't really like when I have had tested out the colors how I wanted to test them and see how they work together which was the actual intention with this I kind of got to a point where uh, I need something else and something quite different so I ended up leaving her because she was just another very tiny mini and like kind of the the details are super small and having the panels look nice and uh, smoothed out is not that easy on it. Uh, it is possible of course, but it's just something where you have to like, it takes a lot of attention. So I kind of needed something else. So I put her in her side and went for something uh, else instead and uh, now I felt it was time again I wanted to uh, work on something and especially something I could show for YouTube um, and I thought this one actually fit quite well because uh, she has like the NMM gold elements and she she has uh, like two weapons that are both kind of exciting uh, and lots of hair to do and make reflections on so yeah uh, i wanted to do this one for for uh, youtube as a kind of a series so i ended up going <laughs> going back to it anyways so to speak a bit about the colors that i use <clears throat> i'll say what i always say about colors I'm using a like a specific recipe but if you don't have the exact colors that I have here don't stress it over it too much you can use any color that is kind of similar to it um, you won't have the your end result look exactly the same as mine but you probably wouldn't anyways because using a recipe is so, so, so much about uh, the exact mixes of your paints because I'm mixing like a gradual uh, transition. Uh, so I kind of get my gradient from uh, one base co color and then putting in more bright. Um, which means my mixes might not be exactly the ratio or like within the mix is the same ratio as yours. Also, the ratio that it is applied. So if, for example, we have the blue range, the blue range you can see is four colors from dark to light, from left to right. If I have a lot of the uh, 
most left color showing and you have a lot of the most right one showing, we won't have the same look in the end. And the same goes for if we have a different ratio of the middle colors. So using a recipe is, is very much also about how much of each color you apply and leave visible. I don't mean how thick it is, but I mean how much of it is in your gradient. That will uh, impact the, the look hugely. So the specific colors I'm using. The darkest blue is dark sea blue from the Lierho. Uh, and you can see that's the, that's the top left one. Uh, I'm not really even dipping into it because I already blocked in uh, some of the areas I needed it and um, you don't see very much of that. Same goes for the red and I'll explain why. Um, but I then have uh, two mixes uh, between the dark sea blue and in the other end I have blue gray from AK. So those two colors are pure from the bottles. Then in the middle of those two, I have one mix one and mix two, let's call them that from left to right. And both of them are the dark sea blue with some blue gray in. A bit of blue gray, but also I have in the middle between the, the blue range and the red range, I have two gray colors. One is a Vallejo neutral gray and one is a German gray. Uh, and I've mixed in some of the neutral gray. I'm doing that because I want to desaturate it. I want to desaturate the blues and I've done the same with the reds because I want to desaturate the reds. I'll come back to why. Uh, so those were the two colors in the in the middle row, the uh, neutral gray and the German gray. Below them, I have a red color, which is Vallejo burned red. Besides that, I have a puddle which is basically burned red, with uh, with a bit of uh, German gray in it, and then made lighter with the blue gray. So the kind of bluish puddle. Then I have a mix uh, besides that, that takes up a, a lot of glare from the, the light, sorry for that. Um, but that puddle is um, the same previous mix of red and just added even more of the blue gray. The blue gray is not a white, it, it is an off white in, in, uh, in that it has a lot and a lot and a lot of white in it. So when you apply it and mix it into something, it is pretty close to white. So you can use it for, for lightening up your mixes here. It's, you don't have to use a, a white. So the reason why I'm uh, mixing in the neutral gray and the German grays in the middle is because, as I said, I wanted to saturate. And I wanted to saturate both the blue and the red because that makes them closer to each other. Which means when I'm blending over the middle, um, it, it is each easier for me to reach each other without it looking uh, like super saturated in that transition. So I keep, keep the shadow color still kind of desaturated before it goes into either the, the uh, bright reflection up top, the bluish one, or into the kind of like the reddish shadow reflection. Because the way I have the red shadow reflection is by uh, having it the, the darker red mix in the middle and then doing kind of like a bounce light from below in the, in the brighter red. Um, it, and some some of the uh, the edges, I just uh, I've just used the um, the blue gray, AK blue gray, uh, especially when they are 
turned up towards the the light source. So it doesn't matter too much if it if it's uh, up to an area that is kind of like the the red shadow reflection. I will use the blue anyways. So that's the reason, and that's my my mixes and my colors. As I said. It is not super important that you use specifically those. I just did because I had those and because I wanted to test those out in the capacity I did here by doing that kind of desaturated gray in the middle and then going either in a bluish direction where I put the light or in a reddish direction where I put the, the dark. So to talk a bit about uh, blending in general. <clears throat> um, when I'm blending, I am generally using the tip of my brush and I'm doing tiny, tiny strokes uh, and I'm mixing between uh, kind of like the, the colors, two colors I wanna blend together. Um, and on this model specifically, it's exactly the same you see. Sometimes I will do a glazing or whatever it is, but generally I will be blending out by kind of layering, uh, layering over. Um, and I control the uh, opacity of the paint to make it uh, as smooth as I, I want it. This model is uh, small. I Probably a lot of you guys know it already, but I was not aware it, it was that small. I had never painted a, an Eldar before. And <laughs> so this is my first one. And it is much smaller than I thought. Yeah, it has some nice like armor panels that, that have some size to them, but a lot of the details are incredibly small. And then when you then combine that with wanting to do a, like a two-tone, which is actually almost like a three-tone blending, it gets uh, <laughs> even more difficult. So to help me, I'm using magnification goggles. I'm using two times magnification. And uh, if you watch my other videos on this or Patreon, you will notice I'm uh, almost always saying that. And that's because it uh, it kind of really fits my, my style in the sense that it gives uh, enough magnification that I can uh, go like quiet, close um, and I mean close with like physically close um, to the model but without having my face all the way down to it um, and it, it kind of suits the setup when when I'm going to uh, film also and um, if I'm painting something on my own that I'm not recording, I sometimes go up to three or three and a half times magnification. But generally I actually don't because I kind of want to have the same setup. Uh, so it isn't like the less variables I have to change uh, while painting on camera and off camera, the better. So I'm using uh, two times magnification. And I'm using an Artis Opus brush, uh, the S range, and this is a zero zero. Um, I actually used to use Raphael's, which are great brushes that I really like. And then I uh, was fortunate enough to have a set sent to me from Artis Opus and to try out and see if I like them. And I will say that they are very similar in, in style to the uh, 8404s from Raphael. Um, they, they are a bit different, but it, it is so minute that it, it's almost not 
really possible to uh, tell any difference. So I'm using uh, this one and I'm using a 00, zero because it is quite small. So like the, the length of the bristles and the fatness of the body of the, of the brush makes it so I won't accidentally touch too much on, on other parts, um, which allows me to make very small marks too, because it's very sharp. As you can see on the, or you could see on, on, the, on the video, I was kind of blending back and forth. I could tell, and I'm doing it on this uh, leg too, I could tell there was a, kind of like a line. Uh, it can be tricky on the video uh, and under that harsh light to see exactly how pronounced it is, especially um, especially when you're seeing it very close up and you're using bright colors because the bright colors will kind of make it look like there is a line between the two colors when there aren't uh, because of how the kind of the opacity works when you shine a very bright light on it. So sometimes it's, it, it actually looks worse on the camera than it is. Uh, but I've kind of figured that if you can kind of see it on, on, on camera or under the, the bright light, uh, it is worth trying to, to fix it at least somewhat. Uh, and when I'm blending those out, um, I'm basically going back and forth between the, the two colors I have in that, uh, in that transition. So uh, let's say I'm using the brightest uh, color of blue-gray, and then I want to blend it together with, with uh, the mix that is the blue-gray, or a lot of blue-gray, a bit of neutral gray, and darksy blue. So the mix just besides it uh, to the left. And then I'm kind of going back and forth uh, between those. So I'm, I'm kind of taking the, the dark mix and dragging it from the light, uh, lighter mix into the darker area and then trying to go do the same thing the other way. Uh, because when you drag the brush, um, where you end up lifting the brush off of the model, it will deposit the most uh, pigment. You can see me fixing, as I said earlier on in the video. If you go over the, the line, don't, don't stress too much because you can just go in and, and uh, clean it up with the, with the Rhinox hide. Um, yeah, so that's how I kind of built my, my reflections or like the brighter areas. I'm obviously keeping the, the brighter areas to, to be up top. Uh, so that the, the shadow kind of is in the opposite uh, area. And I'm, when I'm painting in the, the reflection, as you see it here, I'm keeping, I'm keeping very close to the edge and I'm, and I'm constantly dragging out towards the edge too, because I don't want uh, too much of the pigment to deposit uh, like in the middle of a, of a transition, because then it will leave a, a mark that I, that I don't want. Um, sometimes when I need to uh, kind of like extend a, a reflection, I take a mid-tone and cut into the, the already uh, marked up kind of shadow area. So I extend the bright reflection with a mid-tone and then from that mid-tone I kind of get a line from there into the reflection or the brightness of the reflection and I then blended that in afterwards. That's how I, I extend them. Because uh, as you can see on the, on the legs, I would still want the, um, the armor to be even brighter. Uh, I'm not showing too too much more of the of the process because this is just kind of the general uh, 
showing of, of how I build the volumes and how I blend them out so I get a, a fairly smooth transition. Um, if, if after I've been kind of like uh, dragging the brush, kind of micro scratching over it uh, to try and get it smooth, if it's not completely smooth how I want it to, I can, I can glaze over it like a traditional glaze. But I, I kind of want to avoid that when I'm using uh, bright colors because when you're glazing up in value, it, it looks a bit weird. It's almost kind of like you, you put a milky filter over everything. So the best way to do it is actually to glaze from the, um, from the lightest area and then glaze uh, downwards in value. Um, so that would mean I would uh, extend the brightest reflection uh, quite a lot. And then I would go from there into uh, glazing it out uh, with mid-tones. Uh, so that's why I'm, I'm trying to avoid having to glaze at all, uh, just to not risk it looking like a milky filter over everything because I want to keep I want to keep uh, some color in there that's exactly why I've chosen the red lower reflections is because I want some color that is not just that very pale almost whitish blue so that's why I'm I'm doing that after I'm finished with this video I will be going back and uh, neatening things up and extending the, the reflections how I want them to be and stuff like that. Uh, it is a bit harder to paint everything under uh, the recording setup, so it will never be my best work under that. Uh, so I'll, I'll go back for that. So thank you for watching and see you guys next time.